Okay, today I'm going to be making soap. Uh, I'm going to make, be making three different kinds of soap. Uh, this one is going to be my activated charcoal soap. And these two are going to be um, a soap that um, a lot of my customers use for acne or oily skin um, and, and breakouts on your face. Uh, so, I'll be making three batches. I'm not going to carry you through all of the batches, but I'm going to kind of show you some of the steps that I do. Um, this one here, I'm going to, what I do is I measure out my lies, I mean my, my oils in a container like this and have them ahead of time in the cabinet. It saves me a lot of time when I'm getting ready to make soap. I've already put this one in and I've already got this one in, but I did want to show you how I do this. Um, I just store them in the cabinet. I make them up. Next time I get ready to make soap, I'll go ahead and make up about six more of these. And I'll have them in the cabinet ready to go. And I just pour it in. I try to get it where it won't splash because some of the chunks will splash if you pour too quickly. And of course, if you're making soap, um, you wouldn't have to have this stuff measured out ahead of time because um, I have measured them out as I was making it so as I was putting them in the pot ready to cook I would just measure out what I needed it just takes a lot longer with pulling out the stuff and putting it up so I just found that this is a way especially working that this is a way for me to have the stuff ready like for say when I get home from work I can just pour it right in and it's ready to go so there goes that and what I do is I just put um, put this back on there. And this does say 50-50 lye solution on this side, but that's when I was pre-mixing my lye, lye solutions. But I haven't been doing that lately, so on this side it just tells me what, what soap mixture this is because I have different ones that I make. I have an organic soap that I make that is in um, a jug with an, an O on it. And then I have the regular soaps that I make have an R on it for me to um, know which one's which. And then I just take this, I don't wash it or anything because the only thing that's going to go back in it is oils. And I just put it back in the cabinet. Okay, so next thing I will do is um, I will show you how to measure out the lies. I already have one here, the lye water. I have the lye mixture here ready because I wanted this one to be ready when I started videotaping. But I do have to mix the lye water for these two. So um, I'm going to show you how to do, actually one of them, I've already done one. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, what I do is I, of course, I use my scale, um, turn it on, put my bowl on it, I tear it out so it goes back to zero because I don't want it to measure the weight of the bowl. And um, these are, this is um, the sodium hydroxide beads that I use, which is the lye. And what I do is I measure it out, how much I need, and I have a recipe that I use. measure out because you got to be exact with this because you don't want any leftover lye and I think that's what um and actually that's perfect a lot of people get confused and they think that lye um soap has lye in it and the lye has actually been used up in the process in the soaping process which is called saponification so I have my water already measured um, I also have some tufts of silk in there that gives the soap a nice slide. You don't have to use that. That's just an option. And then you always pour the lye into the water. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing, for safety, lye is very, it will, it will burn you. It can be dangerous. It can be fine as long as you handle it um, properly and you respect it. You, you really need to use gloves. I have the gloves, but I don't like to use the gloves. Uh, it just kind of gets in my way. They're big and bulky. It's not the little plastic gloves like the doctor wears. It's gloves made for lye, and they are outside. Um, I have some cast iron pots that I have in a lye solution that I'm treating to try to get them. Um, uh, I, I got them, and they were kind of in some bad shape, and I'm in bad shape, so I'm trying to get them pre um, prepared so I can use them for cooking. So I have the gloves out there because I have to actually reach my hand down in the lye water to pull them out, so I have to use it. But 
for this, I'm usually really, really careful, but if you're if you're just starting out using live, please just go ahead and, and invest in the gloves and use the gloves. Um, I have got this on me occasionally. It, it will burn me a little and I'll rinse it off real quick, but there have been people who've really been burnt really, really badly. So just be careful. Please use the uh, the gloves until you know you know you're more experienced in using the lye. Okay, so what I do now is you always pour the lye into the water. You never pour water into the lye because it can cause a reaction. I've never done it, so I'm really not sure how it how it works. But people say do not pour the water into the lye. Always the lye into the water, and I pour it slowly. I use a Bachelor to carefully and if you notice I'm doing carefully I'm not trying to get in a big hurry and if you also take some um, dryer sheets and wipe down the bowl before you use it it will keep the lye from sticking but this is my third batch so it is starting to stick a little but I got most of it out, so of course I'm going to rinse these. I'm not going to use them or touch them until I've rinsed them out. And I always, since I have children, I go ahead and get the water on that so that they don't accidentally reach in there. Now, what I'm going to do is try to show you, this is the last solution. And I just use the whisk to kind of stir it around. Um, I'm not sure if that's what everybody uses. But if you see, it's kind of a milky white. And what it's gonna do is it's going to clear up. It gets very, very hot. <clears throat> so you have to be careful. And it gives off a fumes, some fumes. that are really, really strong. So what I do is I sit this over by the window and <clears throat> the fumes will go out the window while I'm um, working on oils and things like that. Now I want my pots on low. And I have to be careful because some of my pots have a warm feature. This one does, so I have to make sure I turn it the right amount of times. So I'm going to let those um, go ahead and um, heat up a little. Actually, I don't have to. This is really, really nice and warm. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this one. This light up. I'm going to go ahead and work on this one so that you can kind of see what I'm doing, I don't want you to have to sit through all three pots. So I'll let you see one and then I'll kind of bring you back a little later. All right, so what I'm gonna do, this is the one that I've had sitting up. If you can see in there, it's nice and clear. It's not the, the white cloudy looking uh, anymore. That means it's ready, it's still nice and hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pour it in. And if you have any oils that um, weren't quite melted, the um, the hot lye water will will melt them for you. Say it always. Mix this out. Um, I don't wash these because that's all I use them for. And if you wash it, you tend to get a a residue uh, from the soap. And it can interact with the um, with the lye when you put it in there mixing it up. So I don't wash them. I just rinse them out and then put them right back up because, like I said, that's all I use them for. I keep them in, a, in, in my soaping. This is my laundry room, and I call it my soaping kitchen. My soaping kitchen. And I just keep them in the cabinet over there um, and just keep reusing them over and over and over. All right. So now I have my lye in here and my oils. Take my stick blender. And I'm just gonna blend it. It's gonna be a little loud. Okay, and if you can see, it's already turning a creamy white. And that's the interaction of the live water live solution with the oils. That's the beginning process of soap. So I'm going, you have to get all of the oils incorporated into the lye water. You can't leave any of the uh, oils just floating around on the top. So, 
And this is my smaller pot pot. I should have probably chose one of the bigger ones to show you. These two are a little bit bigger. This one's a little smaller. And I need to just go ahead and um, quit using it because it can get really full. Okay. And you can make soap um, using any type of oils that you like. It depends on your what you want. Um, I would suggest if you're going to make soap that you would just start out with a simple recipe. Don't try to come up with this master recipe. That, you know, maybe start out with just two oils, maybe even one. Maybe you just want to make a nice lard soap. Um, and there are some simple recipes online that you can find. Um, and if you see, it's kind of it's, it's getting thick. That's trace. Whenever you can pull it up and it kind of lays on top without going right back down, you're at trace. But I still have some oil. So I, I have to get that and I'm going to be really careful because this is lying here. So you, you don't want to slap it everywhere and I have on occasion done that. quite done but what I want to do is I want to take my spatula and I want to try to get that oil to it's not working with me it doesn't want to go in mixing in but it will and if you hear the children they're outside I have the window open they're outside playing their daddy's outside with them so you may hear them hollering at each other out there you know how how siblings are they want to fight and argue so especially the little guy he thinks he's supposed to always get his way. So if you hear them, they're outside um, in the yard playing. Okay. And I just kind of tap it. You want to get as much of it off as you can because then you don't end up with just lye and oils mixed together on your spatula. Okay. And then I always keep a bowl just to put it in. And, and I don't need to do anything else to that. It's mixed in nicely, so Rather than end up with a lot of stuff on here, I just kind of bump it off. Um, and I really need to get me a new stick blender because the one I had was metal on the end and it broke. And this one is plastic and if you can see it's kind of gets a little, um, a little warped through here because the heat so I'm going to have to go ahead and get one because this is my last one and I really don't want to be in the middle of a batch of soap and it's stopped working. So, all right, we're going to move on. Um, what we would do now is, um, let's see if that will stand up. It doesn't like to stand up because it's um, melted on the end. So, put it there. So what I'll do now is I will go ahead with my lid for this one. This one's going to go ahead and start cooking. I'm done with this one as far as getting everything ready. All I have to do is let it cook. I'll keep checking on it, making sure it doesn't boil over. And I will also um, just keep stirring it, keeping it loose from the sides so that I make sure that it doesn't stick because it'll dry out. And I'll just keep stirring it and I'll bring you, bring you back to that one. So... This one is ready, so I'm going to go ahead with this one, and I'm going to go ahead and pour it in slowly, just like we did the other one. Now you should just kind of let it drip out a little. Mix it out some. This one's ready. We're gonna do this one the same way. Mix it around a little. We're gonna start it blending. It's 
just kind of move the blender around. Make sure that you um, don't pull the blender up too far to the top because if it, it will start slinging it. And I have um, got it on me a little, and it will burn when it, when it gets on you. Uh, you have to, like I said, you have to be really, really careful. And please, if you're a beginner, if this is something you are just trying to learn how to do or figure out, please wear the gloves. Uh, they, they come up to about here. So it is kind of nice. Some people even wear long sleeves. Um, and I did that to begin with. Some people even wear goggles so it won't be in their eyes. If you're really, really careful, you shouldn't have a problem. But like I said, you know, if you're not familiar with it, just in case, I recommend, I don't to tell someone something's going to get them hurt, I recommend that you wear the gloves and that you are still very, very, very cautious. Um, and like I said, this is hot process soap. Whenever this soap is done, um, it will actually be ready to use, but, but it, it will be soft. So you really, in, in a soft soap, is gonna use up a lot quicker in the shower than a hard soap, a hard bar soap. So you really want to um, let it sit up for, it depends um, on the type of soap. These I will let sit up at probably a week at least. Um, and then I, I fill them, give them a little squeeze test and if, if they will, are like not spongy, but if they give some when you, when you um, let me tell you what, if they give some, I bought these and I keep forgetting to bring them out, so I could just kind of sit it on like that. Um, if you squeeze it and it still feels a little, little, a little give to it then I would let it sit up a little bit more. Um, and you also never want to wrap soaps or bag soaps that still have the moisture in them. If they have a little, that's fine. But if they're wet, you, you don't want to bag them. First of all, it smears all, all on your bags. And then secondly, um, they can't dry out in the bag. Now these are some lard soaps um, here. Just plain lard soap for a customer um, that uses it for her laundry. And these are really, really hard. When I press it, and when I say squeeze it, I just mean squeeze it like that. They, there's no give to that at all. And I just made these on Friday and cut them on Saturday. And they are so hard, but that's because they're only lard. Coconut oil soap does that, and lard soap does that. I'm not sure if there's anything else, but, but these are nice and hard. And I have these baskets here still sitting uh, for me to go ahead and get them bagged. Now I also have some more soap. Try to find what I did with it. Oh, yeah, I remember. These here are um, eczema dry skin soap, and these still have a little bit of a give to it. When I, it's getting better, but when I press it, I can almost feel if I press it too hard, I'm gonna leave a thing, my thumbprint in it. So these aren't quite ready for me to do anything with. So I have them still sitting drying and then when they're dry enough i'll bag them up okay so this one's ready we'll go ahead and get the lid on it and this one's ready i was trying to wait and see if i can show you what this one's gonna look like when it starts um getting to a different stage see this one's already ready it's uh, nice and clear on the inside so I know that it's ready um, nice and hot these oils aren't melted all the way and that's okay because the lye is really hot and also it's gonna react with the oils and when it reacts it, it heats up so even if everything's not um, not all the way melted it's okay because 
the lye solution is going to help me out with that. I am trying to have some coconut oil in here that feels kind of hard. Make sure that there's no big chunks, but it should melt apart. Right. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with this one. I'm going to pour it in. This is the way I normally do it because um, I've done so many. You know, leave that one sitting there. The children are outside, so we're okay. And I will keep that one out in just a few minutes. Now, see, this is the way it's supposed to do. I don't know if you can see this. It's not thick yet at all, but it blended in nicely to begin with because this, I had just poured the oils in here. They weren't as hot, but because these other ones were hotter, they interacted with the lye immediately and started making the soap. Where this one is still um, real runny, it's because the oils weren't heated up and it doesn't start, even though it starts interacting with the lye immediately, it still doesn't go through that process quite as quickly because it's waiting for that heat because the heat actually helps it go through the process. That's how when you do hot process, hot process soap, which is what I'm making when you use heat, where you cook it, um, the heat actually forces it to go through the process so the soap's ready quicker. If you do what's called cold process soap, uh, which some people do, I've tried, I, didn't, I don't really like, I am gonna try my hand at that again so I can get a little bit more creative because these soaps are thicker in the end. You can't do a whole lot with them. You can, but um, it's a little harder than cold process. But cold process is not already done. You have to pour it in the containers and it has to sit for weeks. Uh, and I'm not, I can't remember exactly how long, but I think it's like 12 weeks. Um, or maybe it's eight, 12, eight or 12 weeks, which is a very long time. Um, but it has to sit that long so that the lye has a chance to go through the process. That's why I like the hot process because I can go ahead and cook it, force it through that process, and then the soap is actually ready when I'm through cooking. And you see this is still nice and runny. Um, we have to get it to the, the um, trace, is what it's called, where it's nice and thick and it piles up on top. Right now it's not piling. It's just going right back down in the liquid and disappearing. That's not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do this some more. It's going to take a little bit longer, like I said, to do because the oils were not um, hot. And some people pay attention to the temperatures. Uh, they want the temperature of the oil to be a certain temperature, the temperature of the lye to be a certain lot, I mean, a certain temperature before they mix it together. And I used to do that because that was the way I was taught in the beginning. I measured the temperature of the, um, the lye water and the oils to make sure that they were within a certain degrees from each other. And I don't even remember at this point. But um, I quit doing that because I found that it just didn't matter. Um, and I see that I'm fixing to have a problem over here. This one is starting to bowl up. I don't know if you can see that, it's called lava. And it looks like it's gonna lava over, which some people say that that is um, caused by the temperature. But I find that if I just stir it in, I have had a couple occasion where it did boil over. And I'm hoping you're able to see that. And you really aren't. I want to bring you down and let's let you. Sorry about this. I'm gonna bring you down and let you see it. Let's get you down right here. Oop, I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this tripod in here. Okay. Now let's see if we can. I don't know if you can actually see. Oh, there you go. If you look right here on that side right over there, see how it's like. It's like a, a mashed potato, almost like a an applesauce stage is what kind of I think what they call it, applesauce stage. But it, it um is gonna start boiling over if I don't stir it down. 
So, I'm going to get it stirred together. And when you make three batches at one time, I have done as many as five. Um, it can get a little hectic. I'm going to do both of these. This one is actually ready. So, I might need this blender to blend that one back down. that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to put the lid on this other one because it is ready. And I'm going to actually blend this one down. And it will blend it into another stage, which is more like a mashed potatoes. This is more like the applesauce stage. I need to try to get this off of here. So you, you don't ever want to walk off and just leave your soaps because then you can have um, have problems if it boils over and you're not nearby to realize it's boiling over and to try to um, stop it because usually the stirring will stop it from lava doing the lava and, and boiling out of the pot completely. So this is going to be my activated charcoal soap, which is great for you know removing impurities from your skin. A lot of women like this one. Oh, about pulled it out too far. A lot of women like this one because um, it, it works great for you know just getting impurities out of your pores, around your nose. Um, and I use it. I don't use it every day because I find it, you know, if you use it too much, it can come drying. Now, if that's and you can use it on your body every day if you want. And I do have a little bar in the shower. And you see how it's starting to get thick? And this over here is real runny. This is more like the mashed potato stage, I mean the applesauce stage. And in the middle here where it's starting to get thick is more like the um, mashed potatoes. So applesauce stage. And, and you can just stir it. And I've got to hurry with this one. I'm glad the children are staying outside. Because sometimes, you know, they come in trying to um, bother you, wanting things, or arguing. It takes your mind off what you're doing. I'm going to cut it off and kind of use this as a spoon. And see, this heat is so, it is, it is so hot that it melts the bottom of this. Um, Your okay, my battery went dead, so I'm really not sure what you heard on the other one. I know that it was um, working when I moved it down to the last pot to show you the volcano. Um, but I'm not really sure what you saw on it, and I'll just wait and go back later to watch it. That way you're not missing anything. But I got that um, volcanoed so under control. It did not spill over. Thank goodness I was in here. But this one is beginning to start. And if you look, you can see this part here is the, is the volcano soap, the lava, where if you're not careful, it will lava over out of the entire pot. And what I suggest is that you um, get anything or everything out of the way. So I kind of just move the stuff over with my recipe. Um, for those of you who aren't sure, I use uh, soapcalc.net is where um, you create your recipes. And it, it will tell you, you put in the type of oil that you want. So let's say that you're doing a lard soap. You, if you're only going to use 16 ounces of lard, um, you will put in 16 ounces of lard and it will tell you how much water and how much lye you need. So, um, that's, I go by that because, you know, you can't, you have to be precise, you can't guess, and you have to have a scale, um, and measure it so that you don't have any extra lye, so that you have enough lye to, to, um, 
turn all the oils into soap but that you don't have extra lye left over that sits in the bar that will get on someone's skin and cause really really dry skin or even possibly cause burning of the skin so um and if you're interested in making some soap if you'll contact me um I can um, actually measure out, unless you have a scale and you have lye that you can get, um, then I can actually measure out how much lye you need for your, your recipe, and I can actually uh, mail it to you. So if that's something you're interested in, if you will just message me on Facebook, um, Heavenly Soaps and Such, then I can, um, can measure out and mail you the lye so that you could it would already be measured for you and actually I could do a kit if you would like I could actually do measure out the lard if you're doing lard soap and measure out the lye for you and then mail all of it to you where all you have to do is actual the actual cooking and if you're just doing a small batch you don't need a big crock pot like this you can use one of the smaller crock pots and that's what I suggest starting off with um, just so you kind of get a an idea because you know you don't want to have a failure and then lose a lot of oils and lye and you know and we have wasted soap so this is going to need to cook a little bit more because it's not all turning into lava yet so I'm going to watch it but I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on it I hear little feet outside Hear our little guy talking. And if you don't get it all off the spoon, it just leaves the clumps there and it's not cooked soap. So I always try to get, get it off the spoon and back in the pot because I want it to cook. I don't want to end up with lye mixed with oils just sitting on my spoon. lie on my hands just a little burn tingle and I hear the door so here comes somebody Mama, what's wrong can y'all play in your bedroom are you gonna be quiet mommy's um in her bedroom. okay you're gonna be quiet mommy's videotaping okay, okay. all right y'all go head to the bedroom close the door make sure the door's closed Okay, so um, as you can see, this one is still really, really white. I have it on low, but it's really, really just creamy. It's nowhere near ready. So this apparently is one of the pots that doesn't get quite as hot. It's on low. This one, like I said, um, is going to be the first one finished. And then this one will be um, second. All right, so now what we're going to do is... Um, I'll back you out a little bit. What I'm going to do is go ahead and rinse this off since the children are back in. I rinse off my whisk and then I have a drawer over here that I keep them in. Yes. No, you don't go to mommy's closet to get stuff. Go play. Mm -mm. No, go play. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and... I need to see first. Go in honors on... They're watching on the video. Go in honors, bathroom. Okay? Thank you. Good job. Uh-uh, go in the other bathroom. Go in the other bathroom. Honors. Uh, honors in there. Okay. She's in there. All right, go ahead in. Let's close the door. Bye, ears. Okay? All right, go ahead. Sorry about that. It's my little guy. He's three. He, he's almost four. Um, these I rinsed out. I don't even dry them because there's no point in it. Like I said, I don't wash them. I rinse them. Let them drain a little bit and then I put them right underneath the cabinet. They don't usually do that. There we go. Put 
put them under there. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to get my super fats ready. And what that is, is that is the oils that you use in the soap. that you're not going to put in the soap at this point because you don't want it to mix with the lies. You want it to actually be left in the bar so that when you wash with the soap, it's some nice um, oils that can um, stay on your skin, some nice nourishing oils that, that would end up on your skin. Okay. What I'll do is I'll bring my scale back over, and I really need to... Um, to watch this one, see how'd I do that? That's Mama's video camera, Daddy Ball Mommy. You want to do yours like that? You wish you could do that? Can you show how'd you do that? How'd I do what? How'd you build that? I didn't build it. I bought. We bought it. Bought the tripod at Walmart. The stand is called a tripod. We bought that at Walmart, and then the camcorder Daddy bought at Sam's. Okay. Okay. Mommy will let you um take a look at it later. Okay. You and I are gonna play. Huh? Where did that come from? Where did what come from? I know where that thing come from. That's a tripod. Daddy bought it for Mommy for her birthday, and he got it at Walmart. The tripod. Wasn't that oh, nice? So, so, so you got it for my birthday? Mm-hmm. I got it for my birthday. When, when, when you was a baby. You, you couldn't get it for your birthday? No, when I was a baby, I couldn't get it for my birthday. All right, go play. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're All welcome. Right. So this one is um is to the mashed potato stage. See, I didn't have any trouble with this one trying to bowl over. Um, I'm going to scrape it back to get any around the top. I try to get it off because when you put the lid on, you... You won't have it getting all over the lid. Rake it, bump it, put it back in there. All right. So now we are fine on that one. All right, back to the what we call the super fats. And there are some people that don't believe in super fats. They think you should throw everything in the pot at one time and just let it cook in it. And but then there, are, and then whatever's left is left in the soap. But then there are other people who think that if you let the soap cook which I, um, I tend to agree. Um, not that I'm right, but this is just my, my preference, my way to, that I make my soap. I let it cook. When all the lye is gone, I test the, um, the soap. And I test it with this, and you can't really see it, and I'm not sure what the name is. It's phenol... Ph I, can't, I can't pronounce it. Anyway, it tests the pH of the soap. And what you do is you take a little drop of the soap and you put it on a napkin, put a couple drops of that on it. If it turns pink, then the soap's not ready. There's still lye in the soap. And then you just continue to cook it longer um, and, until you know that all the lye's gone. And when I know that all the lye's gone, then I'll take my super fats, which are the oils that I'll measure in these bowls, and I'll dump it in because the lye's already finished. It's already used all the oils, oils it's gonna use. It's done its job, the soap is ready. So then the super fats can just mix in with the soap and then once they cool, they cool down in the bar and when you wash, they end up on your skin. Again, um, some people disagree with that. They don't do it that way and they don't think that's true. Um, and, and that's fine. Um, I, you know, I respect everyone's opinion. Um, I don't try to argue with them. Um, because like I said, this is just the way that I do it and this is what I believe works best for me. Uh, and that's the thing with soap, and you have to kind of figure out what works best for you because what works best for you may not work best for someone else. So, with all that being said, um, we're going to measure out the super fats. Um, this one is starting, if you can see it, it's starting to lob up a little. I'll keep my eyes on that while I do uh, the super fats. Now, I don't have my super fats out. I'm sorry. I thought I got out the, the amounts. Um, and I need to organize this book again because I have pulled stuff out of it and just didn't put it back in. Yes, sir. Where's my, where's my 
Where's your motorcycle? Did you take it? The one that mommy bought you? Did you take it outside? No? Ask Connor to help you find it. Please. Thank you. I do not know where it is. He's hunting for his motorcycle. A little motorcycle I bought him yesterday. Um, Alright, so I have um my stuff here. I'm going to um, put in the super fats. First thing I'm going to put in is the olive oil. So I will put, make sure you can see me. Yep. I will put my bowl on here. And the, the table is a little bent in. I guess it's from the heat from the crock pots. I want to get a nice wood table or something that I wish when we built the house that I had built a counter type over here. But I want to try to get something over here that I can use besides this table. But it works for now. Tear it out to a zero. I'm going to put my super fats in. Okay. And what I do, this doesn't have to be exact. Um, th this is um, extra vir organic extra virgin olive oil. It doesn't have to be exact because this is a super fat. So it, it's, you don't want too much, but you want enough. So if you're a little over what you wanted, that's fine. Um, I put about a half of an ounce of this in there. Uh, the bowls, apparently these bowls weigh a different amount, so I have to tear it out every time. Like I said, I, if I get 0. 0.6, and that's 0. 0.5, the other one was 0. 0.6, it's not a big deal. Okay, put that one in. Oh, that one went to zero, so apparently those are the same. Okay, that one's 0. 0.6, that's okay. I'll leave that one on there, tear it out, come through with the, through with the olive oil. Now I'm going to add my cocoa. Uh, nah, let's not do the cocoa butter. Let's do the coconut oil. All right, I have my coconut oil up here in a 50-pound bucket. Um, it's on the floor. You can't really see it. But I'm going to get a spoon. And what I do is I'm going to tear that out. I'm going to add in about an ounce of coconut oil. And I buy this by the 50 pounds because I use a lot of coconut oil. And, and you know, you can do, you don't really have to. This was like two teaspoons and is a is a um is an ounce. Now I'm making a lot of soap. So if you're just making a little batch, you wouldn't want that much, but um I would probably say two tablespoons of olive oil, two, maybe two tablespoons of coconut oil. Even though I'm using a teaspoon, it, I am dipping up big spoons. So, that one on there. Tear it out. That's one teaspoon, two teaspoons, well, three teaspoons. Four teaspoons. Not no, not even four, so. Alright, that one's ready. Put that over here. Check on the soap. Watch that one too. Let's tear that out to zero. Alright. We're gonna do one ounce for this big amount of soap. And this will make um these recipes that I'm doing now will make about 25 bars of soap that is between five and a half to six ounces in weight when I slice them. So, done with that. Let's put this back over here. Now, I'm gonna have to stop for a minute to check on this. See, it looks like it's starting to boil up over here on the side, so I don't wanna wet it. And the, again, this is the smaller crock pot that I have time, um, trouble with it. Sometimes it'll go right up to the top. And okay. I'm gonna put that down. Get this cleaned off. Get back 
over there. Uh, let's use this. Stir around the edges to kind of making a lot of noise. Also, um, what I use is these Wilton cake knives. And you don't have to use this. Um, you can use a, um, a butter knife, I guess. Um, I just take it and I scrape all the way around the edges because sometimes the soap will get stuck and it, if you leave it there, it dries it out and it turns white. So if I add any kind of herbs, and this is my acne soap, so it will have um, turmeric and paprika in it, I think. Or it might just have turmeric. I have to check the recipe. Uh, but this helps to make sure there's nothing sticking to the wall. So that one's ready. As you can see, this one's starting to lob, but we're going to do with it just, just a minute. But I want you to see how this one's going. Not sure if you can, if I can zoom you in. Nah. Let's, I'm going to unplug you for just a minute and I'm going to have to plug you back up because I forgot to um, charge my camcorder. But if you see this one here, back out a little bit. If you see around the edges, it's getting like really clear and in the middle it's got like a translucent type soap on the top that lets me know that it's almost it's almost done so I'm gonna go ahead and stir that one let's go ahead and take you back down here get your plug back in boop, boop, boop. I lost you again the battery went dead so I had to give it a second but um Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stir this down because it is cooking nicely. I'm going to start in the one that's kind of translucent and get it mixed in with the other one. If you see the other one's real nice and creamy, get them stirred together. And as you notice, as you're kind of doing one thing, you have to keep stopping. So I'm in the middle of getting my super fats ready, but I have to keep stopping to tend to the soap. So it's kind of like it's if you're doing this many, you know, you don't have time to do anything else. Now, if you're doing one batch, you know, it's not too bad. Um, you don't have to stand here with it because, you know, as much. I don't I don't recommend that you walk off and leave your soap though at all. Because things happen. And I need to use this and make sure I feel some places on the side. See if you see that white that's kind of soap that was starting to stick right here. And let me just kind of show you. See if we can see it. That's kind of a white glob that was stuck around the edge. But it'll go back in. It will be fine. You just don't want it to leave it on there and it end up burning, which I've never had the soap burn. But it will dry out really, really bad, so you don't want it to continue to dry out. So, that's mixed in nicely. I'm going to put the lid back on this one. Run this back around one more time. Get it off the edge. And these are the same soaps as far as the base recipe, other than uh, this is going to have the uh, add, you have different things added to it than these two. Alright, so now we have our olive oil, we have our coconut oil. I'm gonna zoom you back out. You can see what I'm doing. So now, now we need to add our shea. I'm going to add two ounces of shea. I'm going to have to turn my scale back on. And I have a big thing of 
tray down here in a big bag and what I usually do is I just keep a spoon in there and I just bring it over and I drop it. That's one, that was one ounce. Mm -hmm. 1.6 and what I plan to do is I plan to buy some little um, 1.9 I plan to buy some little containers with lids that will store easier and go ahead and measure out super fats which is, is this type of stuff I add at the end. Oops, I turned it off. And have them in a container already um, ready to go. Just like I try, I'm coming up with some little ways that this is my, the essential oils, the amount of essential oils that I add to my eczema soap. I've already mixed the blend together and I keep it in these little jars in the cabinet because that is one of my best sellers. And then when I'm ready to make it, I don't have to worry about actually taking the time to measure it out because it's already done and I need to go ahead and do these that way too. I may try to do that today. So here's some more shea butter. That's one, one ounce. And I, um, I buy the shea butter, I, I think I bought 25 pounds when I bought it. Yeah, that's two, a little bit over two, that's okay. Because when you're making soap, you know, it can be expensive depending on what you're putting in it, especially if you're buying little, little quantities of stuff here and there. So, um, well, if, if you're making a little bit, I guess it really doesn't matter, but if you're, if you're gonna make it and end up making a lot of it, you definitely don't want to be buying little tiny bits of stuff here and there because you end up paying paying a lot more than um, you would otherwise. And I know I probably need to put that shea butter in something and make it easier for me to get, but this works. I just keep my bag under there and that's the shea butter, okay? now. So I have the cocoa, coconut oil, shea butter, the olive oil, and now I need the cocoa butter. I'm gonna save that for last. Um, this is my organic cocoa butter. And I'm going to add one and a half ounces. And this kind of is hard to cut. And I'm not sure if all shea butter is this way. do is I just take a knife and I shave it off and I guess I could go ahead and okay and it kind of spills at different places it pops out almost there 1.5 okay got to get a big hunk That's an ounce. Point five. And as you can see, it would make it a whole lot easier if I had this already um, done and then all I had to, to do is um, dump it in the same way I did the other oils. And oh, 1.6, actually perfect. Okay, and I will put this back up. Oh, 
Alright, um, you should just pick up the little pieces of cocoa butter. So that, that is it for that, other than I have vitamin E and glycerin. And usually I add about two tablespoons of each one, but I'll be honest with you, I don't measure. I just go one, two, one, two, and this is vitamin E. One, two. Okay. And then this is the glycerin. Same thing. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now, if you want to measure it, that's fine. I used to measure it, but I got over it. And... I don't measure it anymore. <clears throat> I just actually put it in. Um, all right, so now we have those things ready. I'm gonna clean off this. I've already messed up one one scale. I got bowls or something down in it, and it malfunctioned, and I had to buy another one. And this thing. Things aren't cheap. I, think I paid about 30, 30 something dollars for it. I really don't remember. I bought it probably a month or so ago. All right, so now I have my super fats ready. What I do is I usually just set them kind of to the back, up against the edge of the crock pot, because the heat from the hot crock pot will help um, cool them down some. So now, if you can see this one, it's looking nicely. It's getting a, a clear Vaseline-y look. It's kind of like what they call a Vaseline look, is what soapers say. Um, on the top, this one is doing the same thing. This one's even far, further along than that one. because It's looking like the whole thing looks kind of like Vaseline. This one is still nowhere near ready. As you can see, the, um, the white soap, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you can actually see it. And I can't unplug you. I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. There you go. You can kind of see that here is the white soap that's still white in the middle. It hasn't even kind of started cooking yet. And then here is the more Vaseline look around the edge. Um, to try to help this, I'm just going to... You don't have to do this. But I'm going to cut it up a little with my cake knife. Try to get it um, incorporated in the rest a little. Be careful because this is very hot. I actually love making soap. Um, it's a lot of work, but I find that it's relaxing. Um, I love making anything that's homemade that I can actually make myself and I know what's in it and I know it doesn't have all that stuff in it that um, the things that you buy at the store have in it. So there's no added gunk in here, you know, it's the, just the stuff that that's necessary, um, not anything extra. Okay. Close that one up again, let it get a little bit more cooking. <clears throat> Alright, so now, now we have the soap cooking. It's getting where it's to the end where it's almost ready, and then we have our super fats already um, at the back. What I'm going to do is go ahead and start getting my essential oils ready, but I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, a lot of soapers have learned that. Um, if you add a yogurt or some kind of a fermented type with you know milk that it will help make the soap more fluid when you pour it because hot process soap can be kind of gloppy oh, I forgot I hadn't pulled you back out so it can be kind of gloppy when you're trying to get it in the mold you have to kind of scoop and plop it in but if you add a little bit of yogurt um, and this is not yogurt. This is my homemade milk kefir. Um, kefir. Or I say kefir. But 
it is like um, a, a yogurt. So I'm going to use this instead. Um, I did buy some yogurt and I usually use it and I put it in the freezer because it ends up going bad. And I keep, keep it in the freezer and then take it out to use it for soap. But when I was getting ready to take it out this morning, I remembered, I was like, you know, I, I heard, there was another soaping lady that uses the milk kefir. So I said, I'm going to try my milk kefir. I had this in the refrigerator. I always keep a jar on hand. Um, it's very, very good for your health, for your gut, um, your intestinal tract. So I do keep it in the refrigerator and try to um, consume some daily. But So I said, this is what I'm going to try. But you don't actually use this until the very end you have to let the soaps cool down you can't just put milk in the hot hot soaps you have to let it cool down so i will put that in in right at the end i hope i don't forget but <clears throat> that's the plan so now now i need to go ahead and get the essential oils mm -hmm. So here are my bowls, and I hope this one's going to be um, big enough. I had enough of these, and one of them, I guess we put in the dishwasher or something, got a hairline crack in the bottom, and it would seep my oils out onto the table because I let them, I do them ahead of time and let them sit while I'm cooking it, and I was like, well, I can't have that happening. Um, essential oils cost too much to have them dripping out the bottom of the bowl, so I threw it away. And these are fine, but I need to try to find me one more. Because what I had was, I had six bowls like this. And I used three for the super fats and three for the essential oils. But, anyway, we'll try it now. Alright, so what I do is I put this on there. I have to find my recipe <clears throat> that I use for the acne soap. And then I add in the amount of essential oils I need. Okay. Uh, the first one I do is orange. And I should have pulled these out and had them ready. And I did not have essential oils up there everywhere. But we're going to have two essential oils. I mean two for acne. We'll do this one for the activated charcoal. And this actually, I don't need my scale because I don't weigh them. I actually um, measure them. And I do measure the essential oils being that they cost so much. Um, Tablespoons of ten, of orange essential oil. One, two, one. And if it spools over a little, I don't worry about being exact. Um, but you do have to be careful with essential oils. Um, I buy my um, essential oils from New Directions Aromatics. And I usually try to buy the 30, 33 ounces at a time since this takes so much. And a lot of people say, oh, but if you use the Young Living or something, it wouldn't take as much. But it does. When you're putting um, this amount, when you're having this amount of soap, this you have to have a lot of essential oils. It doesn't matter what kind you buy. Uh, and these are, are really, really good essential oils. Um, but if you don't, then when you the heat process and the cooling down process will use up all the essential oil and, and you're not left with any um, any smell, even though the smell is not what we're after. It is, um, it is beneficial for the smell too, but also you want some left on um, your skin. So, next I'm going to use tangerine essential oil. Okay. Did you need me, Kaylin? Huh? No, I need you. I'm smoking. Are you looking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to use tangerine essential oil. Mmm, smells so good. I'm going to use one. 
and one. And the the orange or the citrusy essential oils are really really good for oils, uh, which a lot of times is is a cause of acne, uh, and, and so it's beneficial for um, for that. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of lemongrass. This is lemongrass. Mm, I love lemongrass. It smells so good, especially in laundry detergent. Add one, two, one, and, and this is the part of um of soap making that is expensive. If you're just making a regular soap without these essential oils, then it's not going to cost anywhere near as nowhere near nowhere near as much. Uh, but if you're using soap with the nice super fats and the essential oils, then it does cost a lot. Yes. Alright, so this is tea tree, which is great for um, acne, for kind of like disinfecting your skin and a bacterial. Um, so we're going to put that in, and I use two tablespoons of that. And if you're using essential oils, you need to go by the percentages. Okay, you're going to have to, what do you want, a Snickers bar? You don't have any more. Mommy said I'm not buying any more of those. Um, are, they, are they in there? I have to uh, look. Yes, I'll have to look. Okay, that was the tea tree. Um, now I'm going to add in peppermint. And you have to be very careful with peppermint because peppermint is great, but not in, in, in large amounts. Let me help him see what he can find it because if I don't, he's going to tear up the pantry. What are you looking for? A sneaker jar or onion? Your arm needs to the floor. Where's it? That's it. Have a look in mommy's lunch bag. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um. Peppermint, I'm only going to do one tablespoon. And like I said, be very, very careful with peppermint. I mean, you really need to be careful with all essential oils. And make sure that you're using the right percentages. Alright, after peppermint, I'm going to use one tablespoon of rosemary. And this one I have a smaller container. I'm not sure why I ordered. And this is um, organic. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I ordered a smaller container because it was organic. There's one. One. Okay. Now, uh, that's it for that. Um, I also use one tablespoon of bentonite clay for this one because it is great for it's great for oils. Um, let me see if I can find a different one. Okay. What I do is I put a tablespoon of bentonite clay in there. Full of bentonite clay in there, and, and also the bentonite clay will help um, hold the the fragrance because bentonite clay is very very absorbent, and it will um, grab the fragrances and just hold on to them, which kind of helps with um, the essential oils. These aren't fragrance oils. I'm sorry, essential oils. Just kind of helps the smell because you know people want the smoke soap to smell good even though the benefit is for your skin people want you know the soap to smell nice so this kind of but that's not why i add it because i don't add it to my other soaps i add it because of the properties that um the beneficial properties it has with 
with the oil. And I'm going to leave that right there because I may have to stir them up again. Okay. So, that's those two. Um, I also add, actually I add both. I add the turmeric and the paprika to, um, to these. Hold just one second. And those are also the turmeric and the um, paprika are also really good. This is my oatmeal. I've already got it. Containers there. Whoops. And this is my beeswax. That one I'm looking for. And here is my turmeric. Okay. I order it by the big, big pan, big bags, and I keep it um, in that when I open the bags. Then I need to organize these cabinets. Um, here's my paprika. So I add in there. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to add them to the super fats so that um, they can kind of sit and, and get really, really moistened while um, I'm waiting. I'm going to go ahead and give everything a stir before we do that. Yeah, and if you, I don't know if you can see, this is getting really, really Vaseline looking. Yes, it's almost, it has a clear, really, really clear look um, on the top, not around there, the rest of it. When you start stirring, you see that it's white, so that's why you kind of keep stirring it in. The more you stir, the quicker the process goes, and if there's any water on the lid, you just put it back in, because... And this is starting to dry out on the edges a little. So I'm gonna, I think this one is almost done. And I have to hurry up then because I still don't have the molds ready. So I'll say it's, just a, it's a lot of work. It's very, very gratifying with knowing that you made something yourself. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of preparation and it's a lot of money. To get started with the things that you need. Um, I think that's what holds some people back. But when I started, I didn't have I didn't have everything I needed. I didn't have as many I had the crock pots, but I didn't have um, everything I needed. You kind of buy it along and along as you see it and can afford to get it. But um, yard sales are a great place to buy some of your stuff. Um, I actually picked up a small crock pot because I want to start doing, and this one's really, really nice looking too. Um, <clears throat> I want to start doing some cold process soaps or smaller batch soaps that I can decorate and, and make look like pie slices or cake slices and do a little bit of some other stuff for some other customers because I have a lot of customers who want just the essential oils. But I do have customers that want really, really smell good, like uh, gingerbread or something at Christmas. or So it just really depends. So I want to kind of try to reach, reach those customers too. Um, soap will be the same, but it's just I would add in fragrance oils, which I have done some. I'll be honest, I have found that those don't sell as as well as the essential oils. Um, I used to do some some melon soaps and some strawberry and it just didn't sell as well. So I don't know if it's the fragrance oils that I chose. I mean they smelled they smelled really nice and don't get me wrong they, they were really nice smelling soaps. They just didn't sell as as good as well as these. So I kind of quit making them, but I may go back. Um, I'm going to start doing some bath salts, and I am in the process of getting everything that I need to make bath bombs. So I tried my hand at that one time, didn't work, and that's another thing that people kind of 
fail to realize that a lot of times you will try your hand at stuff and it just doesn't work out and you kind of waste it and you don't know what to do. All of that. On, come here and Pepsi. All right, so these are the super fats. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this one down first. Mommy, sorry, you're coming. All right, did I just stir this one down? I can't even remember. Yes, mm-hmm. All these, these crock pots are hot. It's getting hot in here. I had the window open. I need to turn the air on. So it's getting kind of hot. Whew. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. You're welcome. All right, y'all playing? You're playing in your room? Yes, ma'am. All right, y'all be good, okay? Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to add the um, turmeric and the paprika. Here is the turmeric. I'm going to add it to my super fats. One, two, one, two. And again, these are great for um, treating acne. They work really, really well. Remember why I left these out because I have to put this one back up before I put this one. Alright, so um I usually just give these a nice little stir. Uh, I didn't put this one in, I was thinking I was done. Open it, get two of these. One. Like I said, this is um really, really great for acne soap. Um stir that in. That way you can kind of see it and get nice and moist. You really don't want anything in your soap that's going to be hard or abrasive unless that's the kind of soap you're aiming for. Um, sometimes um, sometimes you do want, and I know I say um a lot, I'm trying to get out of that habit, but you don't want it abrasive. You want it to get really, really moist in there and kind of just mix in nicely so that you don't even know it's in there other than you getting the benefits the benefits of it without any scratchiness. One time I did a an oatmeal soap that I didn't let it do. I didn't let it sit like this and moisten and it is really really rough. Even though it's fine it's really rough but what I do is I use it in the shower so on a rag so it doesn't matter but when you do your hands over it it's really really um really really rough okay so now we have essential oils which i'm going to sit here if you notice my pepsi the tables are bent in i it has to be the heat from these crock pots is all i know i'm going to set these back i usually set these back as far as i can away from the children like i said i don't i don't leave them and there's some cocoa butter. I don't leave them unattended, but I do like to set them at the back just in case the little guy comes in, he won't grab it in a hurry before I can um, get him. Okay, now we're done with that one. That has everything it needs. Now we need to go back to the activated charcoal. Okay? Um, whew, not wet on the book. Need to be careful. This book has all my stuff in it. I don't want to lose. Here's some little pieces of soap that ended up out here on the table. I don't want to lose my recipes. I need to redo this. A lot of these I don't use anymore. And, um, 
I just need to need to redo them and get rid of a lot of it. Ones that I tried that just didn't didn't work out, and, or things that just weren't good sellers, so I quit making them. Hmm. Now I have to figure out where I put my activated charcoal. Uh, another thing you have to do is you have to keep track of prices so you can break it down and see how much you've used if you're planning on selling. Now, if you're using it for yourself, then you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, hmm. What did I do with the activated charcoal? Hmm. I know I'm overlooking it. Should have pulled it out this morning. Mm -hmm. That's not it. I know those aren't it. Okay. I know it's in here. That needs to be my what I do for next week. I need to go through here. Okay, there we go. Alright, so, no, that's not it, that's not it. Okay, I know where it is because I use my eczema dry skin recipe. That's what it is. I use the same amount of oils that are in my eczema dry skin. So I need lavender, tea tree, lemongrass, and peppermint. I need lavender, tea tree, peppermint, and lemongrass. Okay. All right, so these are the four essential oils that I use for the eczema dry skin. And what I'm going to do is just measure them out. Um, Lavender, I'm going to need three. Doesn't matter if I use this one. One, two, three. Tea tree, I'm going to use three. Can I turn your iPad on? Yes, I can. You don't touch mommy stuff? I uh, know you're not. Yeah, but you're touching it to see how it looks. What's that? That's the peppermint. It's dead. See, it's dead. Go give it to Honor and tell her to plug it up. No, you can't plug it up and watch it on the bunk bed. No, sir. Go ahead. Tell Honor to um plug it up for you. Yours. That one is mine. You talking about mommy's work iPad? Yeah. No. No. Go ahead. Honor, will you please charge that for him? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I've got my lavender and my tea tree. And then I'm going to add my lemongrass. There's one lemongrass. Okay. They can hear you whispering. Alright, and the peppermint, I'm going to add two peppermint. Okay, I'm going to need this. That was one. Oops, watch out, baby, don't hit that. Yeah, go, go put it in the kitchen. If you want her to charge it. Thank you. Mm -mm, I said no. The answer is no. Go ahead. Let on let on put it up to the bar for you, and then you can um, watch out. Don't hit the camera. Yeah, I can watch with you. Yes, you can watch with you. All right. So now I have the essential oils ready for the activated charcoal. I'm gonna sit them kind of over at the back. Um, and if you notice, I have not left this room really since um I started. Okay, that one's moving along nicely. That one looks like it's almost ready. I don't know if you can see that and I can't unplug you if I do it's going to 
but it, it's a really translucent type. Oop. Spilling water out of the lid. So that one's almost ready. And then this one looks like it might be ready. So we're going to go ahead and test that one and I'll show you how I do my testing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a stir. You always want to stir it up nicely. And what I'll do is when they're done, or almost done, I'll go ahead and add the super fats in and then let them cook a little bit longer. And then I will turn it off and let it start cooling down because I cannot add the essential oils until it has cooled down. If you add it when it's too hot, it gives off these really, really strong fumes. It's called flashing and it will flash and um, you just don't want that. You don't want the smell. It gets really strong. I have to, I have to actually turn, uh, close the door and to the, um, to the room in here and leave the window open and turn the fan on right there in the bathroom to get rid of it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I usually just take a little piece of paper like this. I'm going to put it right here so you can see. I'm going to get a little bit of soap. And I'm going to put it on there like that. All right. Then what I do is I take the drops that I told you about. And I put about four or five. I probably put way too much. But I want to see if I can zoom in enough. There it goes. That's what it looks like. Um, and if you notice, I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom out a little bit to see if you can see it. I don't know if you can see. There's a little pink place right there. But other than that, see, now you can see it. There's one little place in there that when I'm smashing it around, it's showing me that there's active life still in there. So I know that this is not quite ready, but it's close enough to ready that I can go ahead and add in my super fats. So, and I'll go ahead and throw this piece in the trash. You never want to put the soap that you tested back into the pot. You always just throw, uh, get rid of it. Um, I'm going to take, this is my activated charcoal. I'm going to, I'm going to take, um, What's wrong? I got my toe. She sat on your toe. I'm sure it was an accident. Was it an accident? Yeah, it was. Did you say sorry? Sorry. Okay. All right, go play. All right, and what Mama, I'm gonna do is take. Mama said, I want my bed up the counter. Yeah, go sit up at the counter with me and watch the iPad for just a few minutes while I'm finishing up. Um, this is the activated charcoal. I'm gonna put in one, two tablespoons. I'm not going to set that back on the counter because activated char charcoal will stain. Now, I will say that this soap does get off, give off a light black lather. It's very, it's more, well, I say black, gray. A gray lather. Um, but it, it doesn't stain your skin. It doesn't stain the washcloth. Now, I don't use white washcloths, so I'm not really sure about that. Uh, we have brown in our bathroom. The light, actually, like the tan, khaki, brown. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in. Get this. I should have already had this done, where it could sit for a little bit. I didn't know if I was going to record today, because usually my husband's in here and he has the TV on. And even if I close the door, I can still hear it, and I hate to record. I recorded something one time. I think I was making apple cider vinegar, and someone commented about the TV in the background. But, you know, it's kind of hard to ask your husband to turn the TV off and not watch TV just because you want to make a video um, of you making something. 
so he's not into all that. Um, so, I think this is ready. And again, this is the super fats and the activated charcoal. Um, I may, I've made this a couple times. I've just recently started making it and people really, really like it. So, whoo, just pops up. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it in. I just use this to make sure that I get it all in. Like I said, these are the super fats. And even the clumps of soap that were on the spatula are kind of falling off, and that's fine. Get it back in there and. Alright, so, done with that. I'm going to set this back in there. I'll use this again, but only for this one. So now, when I do um, those batches there, I will not use that spatula again for them because I don't want black in those. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir it up carefully and again this is the super fats that end up on your skin and in the activated charcoal and I'm really I, I meant to pay attention to what time I started but as you can see it's um, it's getting close to 12 o'clock and I've been in here quite some time so when I make these it's one reason why I like to go ahead and make three batches because if you do one, it, it takes almost the, amount, the same amount of time. It doesn't take quite the amount, the same amount, but it takes almost. So if I'm going to spend that amount of time in here soaping, as I call it, I kind of just feel like I just will go ahead and make three, at least three batches, and that way I've got three done and I don't have to spend three half days it will take me probably about five hours from the beginning to the end if I get the oils together at the beginning cook it and clean up now I don't clean up I'll go ahead and say this the same day I clean up but I don't I take the pots and set them in the sink because the soap is still really um soft and so it works. I found that it just works better if I just let the crock pot sit with the leftover soap in them. And I try to get out as much as I can. I don't leave much in it because it makes it easier. But then once they've sat there till the next day, it just makes it easier to clean up. So I'm gonna scrape around the edges of this. Want to make sure get it all mixed. Okay. Okay, now so see this is nice and black. Activated charcoal. Get it off of there. I'm going to turn this off. It's going to continue to cook because the crock pot, it's going to take the crock, the crock pot a while to cool down. So it will continue to cook for at least 30 more minutes before I'm ready to add my own, my other stuff. And I'm going to move my milk kefir over here because if I don't move it over here, I think I'm going to forget. Through with this. And move that out of the way. Um, let's see. I think this one's going to be ready first. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I said I'm going to get a new spoon. big spoons. I love these spoons and I got them at um, Agri Supply. This, I mean, it's got a really long stick and that's what I love about it. Um, they work great for, for soaping and I think I only bought two of them, but I have one outside because I am in the process of redoing some cast iron skillets and pots. Um, when my father passed away, I got a pot, a skillet, and a lid. And I kind of just let it sit up and I decided that I want to start using the cast iron. So I bought, I found me a piece the other day at a thrift store. And it's a vintage cast iron pot. And 
I want to redo them, so I've created a lye bath outside, and um, you just put the pots down in the lye, and it cleans all the crud off of them, and it says you can leave them one day, two days, or as long as you want to. It doesn't hurt the pots at all. So, they've been out there since yesterday, and I'm going to check them tomorrow. But um, anyway, I have my big spoon out there because I would I reach down and like grab the handle of the pot and pull it up. And that's where my gloves are too. That um are for the lye to make sure you don't have the lye you need to get the lye splashed on you. But this one, we can go ahead and test this one. I don't think it's ready. But let's go ahead and test it anyway and see. This over here so you can see. You don't need a lot, so you don't want to put a big glob. Just like that much. Sing you in so you can see how I do it. Okay. Oh, all right. Turn it around because there's a little piece of paper stuck up right there. Okay. Now, I will take my. Phenol fin or something. I, I don't even know how to spell it because the, the bottle is wore off. But I'm going to drop a couple drops. One, two, three, four, five. I usually just keep squeezing six, seven. Um, and then I give it a nice squeeze. Give it a second to see if it's going to react. It looks like it has a little bit of a tint to it. Not really. Hmm. Okay, yeah, now I see. It's turning a little, I don't know if you can see the pink right there. It's hard to see on the camera, but it has a light pink on the napkin. The white paper towel helps to see it better. Unless it's like really, really pink. But it has a little bit of pink, so I'm going to wait on that just a little bit longer. I'm going to throw this in the trash. Alright, so let me go back over and check. Soaps are done. Super fats are ready. Um, the essential oils are ready. Have my milk kefir here sitting and waiting. I'm going to give this a last stir. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one too, I think, because, like I said, the, um, it's going to continue cooking. It's not ready yet on, this is hot, it's not ready yet. Uh, and what I do is I heat these up in the microwave just enough to melt them um, so that, um, I forgot to zoom you back out, I'm sorry. But I heat it up in there enough that it's fluid enough for me to mix in the other stuff. And if I didn't have anything to mix in, I won't worry about it. But some of my soaps have oatmeal. Some of them have the turmeric and paprika. Some of them have activated charcoal. And a couple don't use anything, but most of my soaps have something in them. So I'm going to pour that in. I'm going to scrape it all out get all that nice, good stuff. And you know, some people you see doing the videos, they, they just do it quickly to get it done and they don't get out all the stuff. But I like to show people how I actually, you know, do it to get it. I mean, you want to you don't want to leave your good stuff in there. I'm going to leave that right there because I can use it with the next one. Give this a nice stir. Some of my And here you just want to, you know, make sure it's not liquid. The oils aren't just sitting there. You want to make sure that they're incorporated in, that the color is even, um, which it really wouldn't matter. I've seen people do use this as um, a fragrance to marbleize, make a different color. Okay. 
I'm gonna close this door. I heard my husband just come in and I'm sure he's gonna turn the TV on and I hear our little guy talking to him. So I'll close the door so you don't have to listen to that. And you can kind of see the white parts of the soap. You want to try to mix it all in. side. Alright, so I'm going to get another one of these. Make sure there's no stuff on the edges. It's just not thin. Scrape it off like that. And then just pop it back in. Alright, so this one's ready to sit. We'll let both of those cook for about, about 30 more minutes before I turn the pots off and let the pots cool down. All right, I'm gonna give this one a quick stir. It's not ready though. I can tell by the top that it's just not ready. Um, and you can see how white it is. But it is getting there. Um, Test this one to see. Okay. And I don't use the whole paper towel for that because you just don't need a whole paper towel. Okay, we're gonna focus in that. six so I guess when I say one or two drops before when I was saying that it's not really correct hmm. that one looks like it might be ready hmm. not seeing a lot of so I usually try to mash it around a little. I'm not seeing really any red. So this one's probably ready too. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that away. And let's just go ahead and mix that one in too. And then I'll be done. And like I said, if there's, if you, if there's just a little or you can't really tell, then you're safe. Because like I said, I'm going to continue to cook this for about 30 more minutes anyway. And it's got to cool down. And it will be really hot when I put it in the mold and, and I'll wrap it. It'll continue to cook even in the mold. So, you see how this is the point where I was telling you that this pot is too little. Oops. Forgetting. Bring it over here. Okay. 
Uh, as you can see, when I put in the super fats, it, it really rises up in the, in the pot here. So this one's really, I have to be really careful. Just gonna kinda. And again, this is the acne soap. One of my best sellers. Um, and it helps acne is all I can really say. Um, can't say that it gets rid of the acne because it would be considered a medicine, but I can say that it, it, it helps the acne symptoms. Mix this in really well. You see the little patches of white. You want to get all that mixed in because you want to have every bar to have all of the benefits of the super fats, the turmeric, turmeric, and the paprika. dark spot. And we will start this again. Okay. Go ahead and clean this off. On the side. I usually do that. All right, now lay that there. So now the last thing we have to do is let them finish cooking. They're almost done, and then we can actually add in. I've already turned this one off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off. We can actually add in the essential oils once those start cooling down. Let me get my um, this is what I used to do the temperature. I don't leave the battery in it because I found even though I use it. It was rusting. It was doing the little, well, not rusting, doing the little acid thing. That is 75. 72. And if I stir it up, it'll be hotter, so. Ah, uh, that's Celsius. Okay, that's not right. Okay, let's go back and try it again. Fahrenheit. 160 to 65. 100 and almost 70 and this one about 160 something so all right so we'll use that to check it in a little bit go ahead and put this up and the key to kind of having some organization at the end is really cleaning up as you go so that um So that you don't have so much stuff in the end to clean up. All right, I am through with my book. So I'm going to go ahead and put that away. That's my recipe. Mm. I think my other recipe is over here. And I'll put my book back up here. Scale goes over here. Oh, I usually put it like that. I'll send it to the back. It's not usually back there. There we go. Alright, 
So that's cleaned up. Now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and get the, the mold ready. So I'm going to try, usually I do it on the floor, just right here in front of the table, but I'm going to try to go ahead and get them up here so I can show you. This is the, the molds, the, these are the molds that I use, and I have um, six of these. Like I said, I was trying to do six. I think I ended up only doing five batches at once. That was a lot, but I had five batches that were finished. So anyway, these are the molds that we built. I use wax paper. Hold on a minute, I'll get it. And I used the paper a couple times. Um, and I've already got these pre-cut. Make sure you can see me. Yeah, okay. And I take these, the shiny side up, and put two of those on there first and put this one on there and I don't tape it I used to tape them and I don't do that anymore it just takes too long and when you try to take get them off you can't and I, I try to save as much time as I can so what I do is I just figured out how much I needed and I want it to cover the whole side. So that covers it. And just take my fingernail, do that. And this needs to be on the bottom, so let's go under. I guess it doesn't really have to be on the bottom, but that's the way I usually do it. And if you wrap, um, if you make soap and wrap yours differently, there's so many different ways. Some people use all kinds of stuff to line them. They use silicone molds. They, it just depends. So anyway, this mold is ready. And I'm trying to just clear some stuff out of the way so that um, I won't have so much stuff. Let's move these down here since I'm gonna do this last. I'm gonna try to go ahead and get this stick blender out of the way. What I do is I just wrap it up and have a drawer right here I put it in. Okay. Now My husband's doing a great job of keeping the children preoccupied for me. I appreciate that. It helps a lot when you don't have to keep stopping or trying to get them to be quiet or figuring out what they want. So when he's here and he help, can help out with them, it's always great. It helps me be able to focus and I would not have been able to videotape today if, if he hadn't helped. All right, check the temperature when you stir it. See, this is 179, 180. Um, the top is going to be cooler than the rest of it. It says 190 now, 189. Okay, so that's definitely got to cool. What I'm going to do is to help it along. This is a hot pot and I'm gonna grab it. I ran out of memory on my memory card for my camcorder. So I had to get my phone to finish this up. Um, I hope we didn't miss too much on the other one but I will have to kind of go back and see exactly how much was missed. But it is ready. It's cooled down enough so now I'm ready to go ahead and add my essential oils in so I am going to go ahead and add those in and what I do is just dump them across the top take a spatula put in what I can and then you're wanting to you want to go ahead and quickly stir it I let this cool down a little bit too much 
Oh, and I don't want to forget to add my milk kefir. Maybe that will help make it a little bit more fluid. But you want to get all the essential oils started in. And I hope I can get the rest of this on my phone. Um, I need to invest <clears throat> invest in a, a bigger memory card for my, my camcorder. And I have stuff on there of the children. I need to um, take off and put on some disc or put it on the computer. Which I don't like just to have it on the computer because if the computer messes up, you might lose it. But anyway, you want to stir it until it's all stirred in. I think that's good. Then I'm going to take and shake up the milk kefir. I'm going to add about three tablespoons, I think. Over there, I'm going to close that. I don't want anything getting in that. And then I'm going to stir it in. See if this helps any. Um, I know that the activated charcoal causes um, it to be a drier. I think I want to add two more spoons. Because this is a big batch. And the ones I saw were people were making like smaller batches. Ooh. mess here. Anyway, we'll see how it works on the other slopes. I had to stop and go get the children's lunch ready, dinner ready, lunch. They're going with their aunt and um, so they have to have they're going to the pumpkin patch and they had to have their lunch before, before it was time to go. Alright, and I'm not going to show you all of these batches just because I'm going to do this one and I'm going to have to stop to go get the children dressed. Okay, so what I usually do, this one's ready, is I put it on my hip like this with the towel up. And this pot's not hot at all, but so I don't really need this, but do it like that. I'll turn you around so you can see the mold. Kind of like that. Okay. Sorry about that, and I hate the battery went dead. I mean, not the battery, the memory card got full. So, anyway, um, just gonna start pouring it in like this. Some people spoon it out. I just found that that just takes too long. But, you know, it's kind of up to you. Can, you know, what you feel comfortable doing. Do you feel comfortable holding the hot pot? And not dropping it. Um, of course, you don't want to drop it. And I just kind of rake it in. Now make sure that I get it down in all of the corners. And you want to try to make get it where it won't go over the paper. When I get to the end, I kind of. Start doing that. I do want it up to the top. Okay, and then what I do is I take the cake knife. And I just get out what's left. Kind 
soap. I mean, you don't want to spend too much time trying to get soap out because you don't want the soap to cool, cool down too much. Let's write the knife off there. Set that back over there. Um, I go ahead and get it off of the spoon. much as I can. Okay, kind of try to get that out of there. Okay. All right, what I do now is I take a small spoon. Dried. It's got little dry pieces, and I just kind of stir it so you can see underneath. It's nice and hot and still fluid. So I usually give it a twist. To get all that underneath. This cool, did cool down to about 150 degrees, which is not usually what I want. I usually like it to be 160, but I will say that I think the, the milk kefir um, helped because it is really fluid right now. Um, I mean, really workable, where sometimes it's kind of like you have to plop it in and let it go. And I kind of try to even it out. Um... Then what I want to do is I'm going to move this to the back because what I usually try to do is, is I wrap it to keep it nice and insulated I'm going to put this back here like this I'll have three I'll let them sit together um, I'm going to take it, bump it on the floor. What? Mama. What kind of? There's still. There's a big piece of my salt. Huh? There's a piece of my salt. That's fine. All right, and I take, um, sit it over here. And I usually cover it with a piece of plastic. Smash it down with my hands like this. Make sure it's nice and even across the top. Then I take some old towels and just cover the top of it and then let it sit. And that's it. And I will bring you back um, when I am cutting um, all three loaves. I'm going to go help the children get ready to go and I'll bring you back. Thank you and have a great afternoon. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, I decided to bring you back for me to finish the soaps. Um, I got the children off with their aunt to the pumpkin patch and uh, my husband needed to run to town for a minute. So I said, well, I wasn't planning to bring you back to finish the soaps, but um, I said I would go ahead and, and bring you back. All right. This is the acne soap. Um, it has cooled down quite a bit. And it is actually 148 degrees, so that's really cooler than I normally like it. But that's okay. Things happen, and you have to kind of go with it and do the best you can. Um, that's kind of one reason why I've never made videos before is because just stuff happens and I hated for it to be on the video, but I'm figuring out that it really doesn't matter, um, as long as you are showing them the process and they need to kind of see how you adjust and adjust for things that, that just happen. 
All right, this is the bentonite clay and the essential oils. And I'm just giving them a quick stir back, so that stir up, stirring them up quickly so that the bentonite clay will get mixed back in it. Um, and what I could have done is I could have stuck this crock pot back in the actual pot itself with the lid on it and it would have stayed um, warmer. But I didn't think I would be gone quite that long. But like I said, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, temperatures are just kind of guidelines. Um, they're not really carved in stone per se as far as you have to do it exactly. They're kind of just guidelines for you to, to go by. Okay. All right. I'm going to stir the essential oils. My other pot over there is really full. I'm just amazed at how full it is. I don't remember it being that full before. But I think I'm going to go ahead and lift it out because it needs to start cooling down some. Because it's really, really hot. Sit it right, sit it right there. See how full that is compared to this one. It's really full. Alright. Mix this in. Um, I don't want to forget to add in the milk keeper. And it's kind of up to you. Some people use buttermilk to put in it. Some people use yogurt, um, milk, cream, heavy cream. I've heard of some people using heavy cream. Now you can use like the powdered goat's milk and stuff, but that's for something else. Um, if you want to, I guess, make the goat's milk or put goat's milk in at the end, then that would be fine. But normally if you're doing a goat's milk soap, which I do also, you put the goat's milk in at the beginning, toward the beginning, not at, not at all the way at the end of the process. Because you want it to be made with the goat's milk soap. This is basically just going in to help us get it a little bit fluider, made it, make it fluid, more workable. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one, I can't remember how many I did in the other one, two, three, four, I'm going to do five, five. I've never tried um, milk kefir before. It is wonderful, great for your body. Um, if you like yogurt, it has some of that same taste, which I'll be honest, I don't like yogurt. Not plain yogurt and the sugary, sugary vanilla flavor and all the flavored yogurts are not the same thing. Um, they're not as good for They're not good for you. They have all kinds of extra added stuff. So I'm finding that a lot of stuff that we eat, we think is good for us, but when you get to really looking at the ingredients list we find out that mm, the healthy stuff that we think is healthy is not quite as healthy as we think it is all right so this is I think mixed up enough Like, um, it's not as fluid to begin with, and then it kind of starts getting easier to work with. Let's straight the sides down. It's starting to push, um, Act like it's I'm trying to make sure I get the corners of the pot curved spots down at the bottom but yeah it acts like it's after it sits a minute like it's trying to get a little bit workable um, while you were gone I took this the pot over here in the sink that was from the activated charcoal and I just scrape 
the uh, bits and pieces left in there forming into a little bar and this will go in our bathroom um, or either I'll give it to the, the in the children's bathroom but they're right they make the same soap they're little bars and that way you're not washing it all down down the drain and I just put them up there by the sink to dry and then when they're dry I'll put them under the sink in a bag with all the rest of the little pieces um, little bars like that that we use. Okay. I think this one is ready to go. So, let's just see what the temperature is real quick. 138, 136, yeah, it's getting cool. Um, if I miss it a little hot, so I'm going to Slip my towel back on me. Um, towel on that side. And I want to turn you around. See if I can. And show you me putting it in the mold. And again, kind of pour and up a bit easily to begin with because you want to make sure see how the paper just kind of whoop, falls back you want to kind of keep it against the edge there we go and if you get some on the edge you can just kind of clean it up the best you can it's not a big deal and I try to run it in the bottom all the way to the edges first. That way the top is not cooling off so much. I'm going back and adding another hot layer so it's staying hot until I'm kind of ready to spread it out. Make sure you get it in your corners. See and down here, the paper is Kind of coming back on me. There we go. And again, this is one of my top three sellers. The acne, the eczema. pine tar which pine tar is really really good for psoriasis or um, eczema or just dry skin or troubled skin um, and the eczema bar is the same exact bar except I don't put pine tar in it because pine tar does have a smell kind of a strange it's, it doesn't stink but it's different and some people don't like it because the pine tar overpowers, even though I put the same essential oils in it, the pine tar overpowers the scent of the oils. So even though you're getting the, the benefits benefits to your skin from the essential oils, you just not you're not smelling them. So you're getting more of the pine tar smell, and some people don't like that. Um, I usually tell people if you're going to order it. You know, and you've never used it before. You know, order one of each if they have those types of skin conditions. Order one of the eczema and one of the pine tar. And then you decide. Because that way, if you don't like the smell of the pine tar, you know, most men like it. So, because um, it has like a an earthy, burnt type smell. It doesn't smell like pine now. Some people confuse. They think, um... The pine tar soap smells like pine. It doesn't smell like pine. It has almost a burnt smell to it. Um, not burnt like really, really bad, but just a weird, I, I really can't explain it. It's just a weird um, smell. And you have to kind of smell it to know, unless you've dealt with pine tar. They use pine tar for um, horses, hooves. I'm not really sure exactly what it does, but um, they use it for for that. 
I'm not sure what other uses it's used for. But I do know it's used for horses. Um, okay, so now you can see the we got like these crusty pieces on top. That's why I use the spoon and flip it around. Um, and I usually try to spread them out. Um, there I go with that um again. I'm going to work on it. Try not to say um so much. So you spin it. You, you turn it around like this and get it under. And you would think that I wouldn't say um. I um um. <laughs> I teach teachers how to use technology. So I'm constantly doing staff development with them. Whether it's during their grade level or a faculty meeting. And I guess I say on um, then too. I just never really paid attention, I guess, because now it's real quiet and I'm, I'm able to hear exactly what I'm saying. And when I do the faculty meetings, you know, you have people moving and on. I guess you're focusing more on the people sitting in the audience or the teachers, the staff, that you really kind of don't pay attention to what you're saying. But I am trying to work on that and not say on um, so much. So I'm just going to kind of turn this down. Twist it around, turn it under is what I should say. All right. I like the way that one looks. It's a pretty look. And some people use the turmeric and, and paprika to, to color their soap. It's not necessarily for the um, acne, but to color it. All right, I'm, I'm not gonna show you this part, but I'm gonna go down on the floor. That gets out any kind of air bubbles that it might have. Then I'm going to transfer the mold over here. Right in the slot together with the other one. 